Oh, how we laughed. Alleged national treasure, comedy actress Miriam Margulies, star of Blackadder and The Real Marigold Hotel, appeared on BBC Radio today to discuss the sad passing of actor Robbie Coltrane. At the end of the interview, whilst still on mic, she said that she saw the new Chancellor, Jeremy Hunt, in the studio and wanted to say F you and call him a bastard. Here is the side-splitting clip, strong language coming. When I saw him there, I just said, you've got a hell of a job, the best of luck. And what I really wanted to say, <laughs> fuck you. Oh, no, 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 bastard, you mustn't say you know, that. But you can't say that. Yes, no, no you can't say that. Not- Charming. Highly talented actress, though she is, she's got form in terms of this nasty invective, having previously said she would like Boris Johnson to die when he was fighting for his life in intensive care with COVID. Margulies, a wonderful example of these caring, sharing liberal progressives, like the Be Kind crowd, literally dancing on the grave of the aforementioned actor, Robbie Coltrane, whose great crime was to support J.K. Rowling in stating that there are just two biological sexes, which I think you'll find is a scientific fact. Take a look at these tweets as spotted by our very own Andrew Doyle. How about this Uh, from somebody called Miss Hire? One less transphobe defender today. Robbie Coltrane has died! Exclamation mark. It gets worse. This is someone called Clap Daddy. Robbie Coltrane, a.k.a. Hagrid, was a transphobe and the world is a better place with him dead. Now, this has echoes of Angela Rayner's comments about conservatives being scum. Ex-Shadow Chancellor John McDonnell encouraged the public to harass Tory MPs on the street. And, of course, Nicola Sturgeon described her Tories as dreadful people. She said she detests them. Now, Alistair Stewart, also of this parish and a broadcasting icon, was very smart in what he had to say about that. Here's what he tweeted earlier this week. To say you despise your political opponents or dismiss them as scum is to debase democratic politics. Now, I'm no Jeremy Hunt fan, and I dealt with him in my Take at 10 last night, which went viral, I think, because it touched a nerve. And I didn't even have to swear. In my view, it's a shocker that this China-admiring, zero-COVID eco-zealot should be anywhere near power. It's my view he's wrong, but he's not a bastard. And I think that whilst we had our differences in the past, I beg to differ with Miriam Margulies, about the fact that Boris Johnson should die. But that is how cruel, illiberal and intolerant some of these figures on the left have become. And even though the country is rife with cancel culture, none of these individuals on one particular side of the political argument ever seem to pay the price. In fact, this video has been celebrated by several high-profile media figures who presumably welcome this toxic level of discourse and the verbal abuse of politicians including top actor Robert Llewellyn. He said, I've always been a casual admirer of the actress Miriam Margulies. I am now a fully paid up super fan. A super fan of abuse. OK. How about top former producer at the BBC, Dino Sophos, who says possibly the greatest moment in the Today programme's history, courtesy of Miriam Margulies, the greatest moment. BBC Radio Times writer Simon O'Hagan simply tweeted, Go Miriam Margulies! And Labour MP Chris Bryant, who responded, Grant Miriam Margulies the order of merit immediately. To celebrate these appalling remarks is a sick joke, especially from a serving member of Parliament on the anniversary of the tragic killing of Tory MP David Amos at the hands of an Islamic extremist. What's their currency? Hatred too. Can I ask how these right-on commentators would feel if Jeremy Hunt had been physically assaulted later that day? Would they still be laughing? Would Margulies still be a wonderful legend? The hypocrisy of the woke left knows no bounds. And how fitting that these comments should have been made on BBC Radio. One commentator asked how it was possible that these comments were aired on the Beeb 
and why the presenters, though picking her up on the language, were so emollient. Well, the characteristically incisive answer came from my fabulous colleague, Dan Wooten, who tweeted, because they agree with her. Boom. Now, I'm all for free speech, and she can say whatever she likes in a free country. Knock yourself out, Miriam. I've had plenty of this vicious stick myself. I've been called the C-word by a top TV comedian for defending women's rights and stating biological facts. No problem. Bring it on. I haven't got a cervix, but I do have a backbone and a pair of balls. In the end, who could argue with Gary Bishop, one of my wonderful viewers, who tweeted the following. If Miriam Margulies had said F Labour on Radio 4 this morning, she would not have had a career by lunchtime. Cancel culture only exists for those on one side of the political spectrum, whilst the rest, quite literally, get away with murder.